Hello and welcome to the real episode 4 of This Week in Linux. Today is Sunday, January 10th, 2009, and tonight's topic is going to be the top 9 Linux stories of 2009, as decided by Linuxologist.com. Number 9. On January 1st, 1970, at exactly 000000 UTC, Epoch Time officially started. That's when the Unix time was at exactly zero. Well, in 2009, we hit a major milestone where on February 13th, 2009, at exactly 233130 UTC, we hit the number 12345678900. Number 8. In July of 2009, Microsoft stunned the world by releasing 20,000 lines of open source code to the Linux kernel. These were used to enhance the performance of the Linux operating system when virtualized on a Windows 2008 Hyper-V server. It seems like it's a, a big deal to the open source world, but really it was to make people want to use Microsoft for their virtualization when there are plenty of, of open source virtualization tools available. Number seven. It was revealed in 2009 that Microsoft was indoctrinating Best Buy workers with their anti-Linux propaganda. They were doing what's called an educational and a training program to bring their experts up to speed on Linux, and really what they were doing was spreading fear, uncertainty, doubt, and lies, saying that uh, Windows is so much more secure than Linux, that it's so difficult to do anything in Linux, and we all know, if you're watching this video, you know that that's not true at this point. Number six. On March 13th, 2009, the Linux kernel officially turned 15 years old. Number five. In July of 2009, Google made a major announcement when they said they're going to release a Chrome operating system based on the Linux operating system somewhere in the second half of 2010. Number four. At some point in 2009, Microsoft decided they wanted to patent the sudo command. Now, it wasn't exactly sudo. It was something like that, but it was a graphical utility wrapped around a command that would escalate user privileges to an administrator level. If you know me at all, you know that I'm completely against the idea of software patents. I like the idea of intellectual property and of someone saying, hey, I did that first, it was really innovative. But I don't think that they should necessarily make money off of everybody else wanting to use it. If you make a product and you want to sell that product based on the idea, that's wonderful. But that's just like saying, no, I created a waffle and therefore no one else in the world could ever make a, make a waffle. Sorry, that just doesn't sit well with me. Rant over. Number three. On December 17th, 2009, Mark Shuttleworth announced that effective March of 2010, he would no longer be the CEO of Canonical. He's moving to focus on the design partnership and the customer aspects of the Ubuntu community. And he still will be remaining the Sabdaffle, the self-appointed benevolent dictator for life of the Ubuntu project. Number two. In April of 2009, Oracle Corporation entered into an agreement to purchase Sun Microsystems, the owner of MySQL. The EU is still filing some antitrust lawsuits against that as, you know, if, if Oracle throws a billion dollars at it to get rid of MySQL, they're effectively going to up their standing in the market and they're not going to have as many competitors out there. They're going to have Microsoft and a couple of others. And the number one story is, in October of 2008, Google released their first Android-based phone, the G1. It wasn't really a big hit. I've actually got some friends that have the G1 and they hate it. However, by November 23rd of 2009, Android itself was such a big hit that it said that it accounted for at least 20% of the share of the smartphone market in the United States. Android is the one big Linux story of the year. They're a huge up-and-comer, and we look forward to seeing a lot more from them in the next year. Well, that's it for this episode of This Week in Linux. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you next week.